Hey everybody, it's Mike DeShazer here at Proof Suite in Seoul, South Korea, and today we're going to talk about interest rates on the Ethereum blockchain. Specifically, we're going to talk about Maker, DYDX, Aave, Aave and A token, Compound, C tokens, and other platforms that enable you to essentially lend or borrow on the Ethereum blockchain. We're going to talk about the ecosystem and the dynamics, the relationship between all these platforms, as well as the mechanisms behind the things that set these rates, whether they be Dow governance or the floating price of some other assets or an aggregation of all of these. And we're gonna talk about the kinds of DeFi activity, such as trades and other things that go on to basically keep this ecosystem as a whole in place. All right, let's sit down and take a look. All right, in this video, we're going to talk about how interest rates work on the Ethereum blockchain. Right now, I have the price chart pulled up for Ethereum to USD. Uh, currently, it is sitting at about $203. And I have a CDP here open that is using a collateralization ratio of 152%. And I have created 20 DAI a few moments ago. And if the price drops below 200 USD, then someone will go and actually purchase my collateral at a discount. Let's talk about why I am borrowing DAI. So I have generated this DAI that I can now use uh, freely. It's in my account. And at any time, I can pay it back to actually unleash my Ethereum that I have deposited. And no matter what, when I pay back 20 DAI, I will always get 0.15 Ethereum, minus, of course, my borrowing rate. And so we'll get to that in a second. Now, many people might ask, why would you borrow money and actually collateralize the money you're borrowing with more value than you're borrowing? Typically, when you go to a bank, the amount of money that you're borrowing is much more than potentially your collateral. So at banks, you might even get a under collateralized or no collateral loan, whereby you put up no collateral and you might get $20,000 or $200,000. So why would someone take the equivalent of $400,000 only to get $200,000 back on the Ethereum blockchain? Well, the reason is maybe if I open my CDP around here in December, when the price is $120, I can then get DAI. I can then spend that money, speculate on crypto assets or use it to pay mortgage or the rent. And then when the price goes up here, I can repay my debt so I can pay back the DAI and I'll get Ethereum at a much cheaper price than when I put it in. Therefore, uh, instead of selling my Ethereum, I wouldn't have experienced the upside. So this is how in DeFi markets the whole idea of over collateralized debt started. However, if I was to open my CDP here, depending on how much collateral I have, if I don't have that much, in this case, I'm really tight. This is, I'm pretty much to the maximum of the amount that I can collateralize. And if the price just goes to $200 from $203, I will get liquidated and I'll never be able to get, I can keep my, my die, but I won't get my Ethereum back at the same rate. So there are many platforms that have borrowing and lending marketplaces. So there's Compound where you can supply funds and you can borrow funds at variable interest rates. There's Aave where you can borrow and lend funds. There's also DYDX, where you can trade using margin as well as borrow and lend. And then there's Fulcrum, where you can borrow and lend. And there's many other platforms that are out there that are less known. And there are many more to come down the line. Each one of these platforms have different mechanisms that make them operate. Some of them set their interest rates based on governance. So a DAO, or Decentralized Autonomous Organization, will vote and set rates to remain competitive. In others, it's based on network effects or how the ecosystem is moving. Some of them even have stable rates that they allow people to borrow at. Some people have taken out lower interest bank loans at let's say two or five percent 
and then lent them on DeFi markets for seven, eight, nine percent to get the carry trade or essentially free money. So these are a few of the platforms that you might experience when dealing with interest rates on the Ethereum blockchain. Additionally, many of these platforms actually have tokens that allow you to earn interest by tokenizing debt. It actually allows you to trade them. So you can actually swap a die, which is Ave die, for I die, which is the fulcrum die, on platforms like this. Now, these are very new markets. So, for example, on Uniswap, one of the most popular DeFi exchanges that we've talked about extensively in previous videos, you can't actually swap because there isn't actually enough liquidity in the markets for them. But as these markets grow and as more demand grows, there will be opportunities. And that's something that we get asked a lot about in the DeFi space is where is the opportunity? And the, the answer is there are so many new platforms emerging all the time that create new kinds of opportunities. And usually when they first emerge, they don't have that much liquidity. But as people learn about the platforms, they gain more liquidity. So for example, on Uniswap, they don't have makers and takers. One can just go in and actually create liquidity for a, specific, a, a particular kind of token so that they actually can be traded and then get the fees that are traded. So there's opportunity to create markets or wait for new markets uh, to emerge uh, that have liquidity. There have been some very interesting platforms that have emerged recently, such as Hedgic, which actually has options on the Ethereum blockchain. So you can do puts or calls. Additionally, you have platforms like Open, which are doing a similar kind of thing. And then you have UMA, who is tokenizing derivatives so that anyone can create different kinds of derivatives. One interesting kind of derivative that exists in traditional markets are securitized or derivatized, if you will, interest rate assets. So because interest rates usually range from 1% to 20%, one, if they're day trading or trading a lot, usually can't see that much upside unless there's an anomaly on a platform like Uniswap whereby the markets are inefficient and the default underlying value actually falls out of sync with the value that can be traded. And so in these instances, there, there are, if you will, arbitrage opportunities. However, as new options markets and derivative markets open up that are based on interest rates, uh, and as, new, as people create new kinds of tokens that might be pegged to certain interest rates or an aggregation of interest rates, uh, there, there are new opportunities that can emerge. Therefore, to help with this, you can now use Orfeed to actually get the interest rates off of different platforms. So for example, you can use the provider interest rates dash lend and for example, put in USDC and get the interest rate on compound and then switch between various assets, for example, like with DAI, and get the interest rates on that. So let's take a look at how that smart contract works. So in the decentralized nature of decentralized apps, each one of these platforms has its individual interface. So for example, with Compound, you'll call borrow rate per block. So they calculate not by the year, but you actually earn money every block. Now this is the case for all of them, but some of them actually just give you the yearly. So for example, with Compound, you have to multiply the number that the smart contract gives you by the number of blocks per year. Whereas Fulcrum has, you know, borrow interest rate that returns their interest rate for the year. And they call, you know, and each one of them calls it a different thing to get the earnings rate or the market interest rate. So we've tried to work to standardize that into this contract, which you can find on GitHub. Now one of the interesting parts about this is that as you can see in this contract there are a number of smart contracts that are referenced. Uh, so this is the current Aave lending pool core contract and for each compound token they have in there's not a master contract that keeps up with all of the interest rates. So you actually have to in instantiate for each individual token and then get the interest rate. So we actually take the token symbol, we use Orphe to get us the token address because also token addresses can change. We saw that with DAI when it turned into PSI. So you, know, you might have, in your smart contract, you might have been referencing DAI, but when it ch changed over, there was a whole different token. So those get updated on Orphe. 
but also the token addresses. So that's why we have the registry system uh, whereby anyone can create or update their Oracle and how it works and open source it so that people can pick out which one they want. So you don't have to trust necessarily ours. You can take this smart contract code, create your own, and then provide it to others or yourself for an asset that you might generate or a tokenized asset that might be pegged to the price. And then each one of them uses a different decimal system. So it can be quite complicated if you're trying to aggregate all of these. So you know there's different uh, divisions and multiplications. Some of them use 18 decimals, others use nine decimals, etc. cetera. Um, but essentially we have a, a get interest rate function that's standardized to the Orfeed protocol in order to provide that data. And of course, if the data is not provide, if the platform or the token is not supported, it will just return an error. So that's essentially how that works. And you can find that code on GitHub inside of contracts and examples in provide data examples. And then you can go down to the interest rate oracles for borrow and for lend. So to review, there are a few reasons why you might borrow and over collateralize. One is to spend against expectations for future gains in assets you are borrowing. So you can pay your rent and mortgage or you can speculate and get some of the upside while you're doing that. Or if you're lending, you're trying to optimize. So let's say you lend here at 213 and now you're earning maybe one, two, three percent and you don't expect to sell until two or three years from now, it would make sense to lend if you're not trying to take on any additional margin or you don't want to use leverage. You could keep your Ethereum, keep the custody of your Ethereum, lend it out with low risk. Of course, there's always risk to the actual smart contract itself being exploited. And then years down the line when it maybe goes to 300 or higher, 400, maybe a thousand, you will have earned an annual interest rate of one to 10%, as well as when you sell versus just kind of holding it. While that is probably the safer bet, it doesn't have as much upside. So those are typically the reasons you might borrow a lend. And then additionally, you have swaps whereby you might, you might see arbitrage opportunities and execute those on decentralized exchanges such as Uniswap or Kyber. Further, there are new platforms that are emerging in the options markets that may include tokens that are pegged to interest rates, or you might be the person who creates these markets or provides liquidity for them. If you really want to geek out on financial modeling, interest rates, no arbitrage principles, and financial engineering, there is one course that I highly recommend called Financial Engineering and Risk Management on Coursera presented by Columbia University. It's a bit, as you say, math heavy, but it definitely goes through how traditional markets work and a lot of the fundamentals there potentially could be applied to DeFi markets. And one more thing, from our last video, we've been talking about triangular arbitrage. One cool feature that we got many comments on was for flash loans to be enabled inside of Orfeed Angle. So that's been added, it's very new but you can easily turn on Aave flash loans and then perform three-way trades. Uh, if you use a smart contract, you can actually do three, four, or five-way trades, receive the arbitrage, use tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars provided from Aave with low interest rate, and then actually receive uh, the return. So that information is also documented on the Orfeed website in the README. And as you know, all of these things are constantly updating and it's mostly used for educational purposes. Thank you for watching this video and I hope this was helpful.